also said, thank you for taking time out today for our readers. Thank you, Sandeep and Pramod. Great. So, uh, Mr. Said, to start with, right, one of your key tenets that you spoke about in the book is the desire to get into challenging situations and being very comfortable with discomfort. Can you talk a little bit about this and take an example from your life about this principle? Sure, I think because there are only two options uh, available to you. One is be complacent, others is embrace challenge and embrace difficult situations. So I think right from the beginning, I had this uh, urge for accepting challenges and, effect and accepting difficult situations and work on it. I remember uh, right in the, at the beginning of my career when I was working for JCB, and this uh, what I'm talking of is uh, late 80s when uh, automation was uh, virtually uh, zero. I mean, companies were working on manual books and stuff like that. That was the time I decided that uh, why not automate our uh, financial processes? And uh, I, uh, right at the beginning of my career, uh, looked at that aspect of automation. And you know, it was for me an easy thing to let it go and uh, uh, just work on the basis of what it was. But I decided, no, you know, one has to do something very different. So it was uh, something you know that really paid off uh, later because we were able to derive a lot of value out of what we did. Uh, and when I moved on uh, a later part of my career in JCB, I decided that now it's a, a time for us to look at a bigger picture, and that's when we worked on a strategic business plan uh, so that you know the company can move forward five years, 10 years in terms of its strategy, in terms of what it's required to do at later part of its uh, uh, challenge. Uh, the other important aspect was we had processes which were uh, dated and we wanted to work on that and we worked on re-engineering all the business processes. So these were some sort of initiatives that and challenges that you know I continue to take at that point in time, which was virtually my initial uh, job uh, in, the, in the initial period. Uh, then I moved on. And then the other challenge that I remember is uh, while I was in escorts, uh, the escorts were working on a, a dated IT system and they wanted to implement ERP. Now, any ERP implementation is a big challenge for any organization because it needs a huge change management. It needs a huge uh, process improvement before you can actually go through it. So that was an uh, exercise for over a year and I, I, I actually accepted that challenge because I was very new to this ERP environment, but I said, no, I will try and accept it and do uh, what best I can do. Uh, uh, so it was not only just the ERP implementation, but it was also about what values can it bring into the organization in terms of implementation and also how do you ensure that people accept it? Because there was, there's always a, a resistance of people in terms of acceptance. So that was the other bit that I remember. Uh, while I was there, there was uh, in Escorts, there was huge liquidity crisis because the tractor industry was going through a rough patch. Inventories had built up and there was a need for liquidity as well as for optimizing cost and both in terms of cost of capital and the other costs. So I worked on various structures at that point in time to look at how we can bring money and also how we can reduce the interest rates. So structures like securitization and many other products that we worked on I think these were challenges that happened at that point in time. Uh, they continued throughout my career, but when I was in Maruti, at the early stage, we had a merger that took place between a powertrain plant and us. And uh, that was something that uh, also involved uh, alignment. It involved cost optimization and also meant change management because you had to optimize the workforce and you, know, you had to rationalize them, bring them in other areas and so on. So these were some of these uh, things that I remember. There, but there have been many others, but uh, that's a long story. I think uh, the book will tell you more about it. Great. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing these details. One more question that you know uh, we found very interesting in the book, right? And uh, also related to the organization. Maruti was one of the first Indian organizations to bring the just-in-time and other supply chain best practices to India. So can you talk a little bit about how and uh, how you implement it is, how do you learn this and introduce this to the organization? All right, so so uh, this concept of just-in-time uh, is a Japanese, well-known Japanese concept. We know it's been, it's been there for a while with them. Uh, my, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, 
my experience of just in time goes back to the jcb days and when i was there we used to work on a component store and we used to stock stuff and so on well uh, so in 1993 i went to the uk plant and when i visited them i re realized that they work on just in time it was quite a revelation at that point in time because uh, in india it was uh, not heard of so much and that's when we came back and we brought this practice to the company which involved logistic planning which involved milk routes and things like that but that was a huge learning and huge experience uh, in maruti we, we were practicing just in time when i was here uh, but what we really worked on was on the su supply chain side in terms of the pillars of excellence so what we really worked on was how do we evolve the uh, uh, the the manufacturing uh, uh, capabilities of our suppliers the quality uh, safety financial management you know those kind of pillars so it was kind of an inclusive uh, work with them to ensure that while you are growing on one side in terms of your excellence you ensure that your supply chain also grows accordingly and have excellence in those fantastic uh, sounds great and one more thing right uh, so you you in the book you have spoken about integrated financial reporting and you have been one of the earliest adapters of this concept uh can you tell us a little bit bit more about this so uh i think integrated financial reporting is now a key for any organization there's a lot of value that uh, the stakeholders place on the financial integrated financial reporting so it's a, it's uh, largely to do with your uh, uh uh social aspects environment uh your uh, your intellectual capital and so on so what we really uh, worked on was that in all uh, aspects of our business we have worked very closely with our supply chain so there has been an inclusive involvement of all the supply chain partners uh, including our dealer network including our suppliers in terms of taking decisions which are in the interest of all the all the stakeholders we all also looked at environment very closely uh, in terms of how to reduce uh, the co2 print uh, print uh, both in our uh, vehicles that we sell also in our manufacturing process that we are doing this is a continuous endeavor uh, with which we, with which we have been working for a long period of time and we will continue to work towards the reduction of co2 uh, over a longer period also on the human side uh, we have done a lot of put a lot of emphasis in terms of looking at long term needs of our employees uh, their their welfare activity both in terms of uh, medical in terms of their uh, housing requirements and so on and so forth so that you know we uh, kind of give them an environment where they can work uh, with harmony with uh, ease and then be more productive so i think it's an it's, it's an area where it is uh, an inclusive growth area where we look at uh, sustainable growth uh, along with all our partners very interesting mr said uh, uh, you know uh, one of the other things uh, which we really found interesting is uh, you know the focus on the industry right so the auto industry is undergoing a rapid transformation how do you see maruti transforming itself to sustain as a leader in this changing landscape sure so i think uh, uh, you find that after every few decades there will be you know a shift in the industry and uh, industry is now uh we're undergoing many regulations uh, including uh, emission norms including tightening of uh, the so called cafe norms uh, which is to do with your co2 regulations and also bringing out uh, stricter safety measures and so on and so forth so what is going to happen now really is that technology products uh, will undergo change uh, you will find uh, more technology interventions you will find more newer products coming in in the marketplace uh you will also find customer preferences changing over a period because uh, the industry is undergoing a, a huge change uh india is still continue to be a very high potential market because it's still very under penetrated market uh so one will have to work alongside the regulatory uh, framework uh, uh, of uh, the globe as well as of the country and on the other side you have to uh, exploit the potential of the under penetrated market over a longer period so it's 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 a very interesting period where a lot of change will be witnessed over the next 5 to 10 years in terms of how uh, uh industry will evolve in terms of new products new technologies uh because norms have been changing and they will continue to change uh, for better and uh, environmentalists have been you know voicing about reducing co2 etc which is a global issue now so that's going to happen and that's a given now 
So I guess uh, it will be interesting to watch the next five to ten years in terms of how players are moving. We are we are well positioned. We are working towards it. We know that these are the important changes that we have to drive our business to, and uh, we are uh, reasonably paused in terms of moving forward. Also. There are many uh, interesting things and uh, takeaways for our young readers, Mr. Said, in the book, right? But one of the things I thought we can, uh, you know, maybe touch upon today is if a young professional. Uh, right, wanted to join your organization in finance, what key attribute would you look for? No, so my take from the young professionals would be that one, he should be adaptable. See, uh, he should be a person who's willing to, to willing to take initiative. Uh, he should be innovative and he should have longevity. What I find is that a lot of people work for a for a very short period and they run away because there's a lure of money or their, their jobs are available. But uh, what I would uh, suggest to young professionals is invest in a company, try to learn and try to contribute, try to add value, uh, in, do some innovation, do some uh, out of the box thinking, uh, make your brand value before you even decide to move on. I think that's very important. Uh, and that's where is what gives you a real value in the later part of your career. Yeah, yeah, that's a 24 karat gold advice, uh, Mr. Say. Thank you so much for today and many more hours that you spent over the last couple of years to share with our readers your journey. And thank you, viewers. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.